today's job is the anodes. And so, as typical with any boat job, ignore the floaties. It's been really warm and we've been out. With any job, oh look, there's more parts. You have to tear the entire boat apart in order to get to what you need. So, we need scuba gear, check. But in order to get to the zincs or anodes, we had to go back in here and go down into this guy and get all the parts out. And now that we have all the parts out, the boat is all torn apart. And there's no need to put it back yet because when the job is done, we're just gonna have to pull everything apart anyway. So we're living with boat craziness for just a little bit until we get the job done. This time on Selling Tashi. <laughs> we're tackling our list of boat maintenance items. We also make an unfortunate discovery that may impact our timeline. have much room for large dive tanks on Tashi and we're not die-hard divers so this compact Mantis mini dive setup is perfect for short shallow dives like when you have to change out anodes underwater. Upside down. <laughs> it's never ever gonna be right the first time. See the gauge. After a quick fill up of our three and a half liter tanks Hal is ready to dive in with those inks. We changed out the zincs when we were hauled out last year for all the refit work we did. We are mostly in fresh water in a well-grounded marina, so we didn't expect much damage, but it was time. The river current kept tossing Hal around, making the job take even longer. And he almost lost his tank because this being the first time we used them, we made the rookie mistake of not tightening down the tank strap enough. But with some good old fashioned persistence, he was able to get the zincs off. And just like that, he's back down again for round two. This time with the tank strapped properly. After completing the change out on the stern, he moved forward to finish off the job. All in all, he changed two forward on the bow thruster. And three stern, one on the rudder strap, one on the propeller shaft, and one on the propeller itself. It took about an hour and a half and two tanks to finish the job. Geared it was about an hour of fighting the river and 30 minutes of actual work. The dive gear was perfect for this job and now we know we can do it underwater. Now let's take a break for an episode of Alicia's Galley Grub. What's for dinner tonight? Asian beef lettuce wraps. It's been hot on the Delta, so we're going light. Just a few simple ingredients make up this yummy summer dish. Start by crumbling the ground beef and browning it over medium heat. While that cooks, chop up the cucumber and half the onion, then pickle it by adding rice vinegar and salt and pepper. Set that aside to top the lettuce wraps later. After the ground beef is cooked, drain the fat. 
Use the same pan to cook the other half of the onion and the bell pepper with some avocado oil. When it's cooked, return the meat to the pan and add the remaining ingredients. Simmer together for about five minutes to let the flavors blend. While it's simmering, wash and drain your lettuce. Pile on your beef mixture. Then top with your pickled onions and cucumber. Then it's time for the taste test. This is, how am I supposed to do this dignified? <laughs> You're not. It's, it's not dignified at all. All right, there we go. Really, really good. What? I'm gonna have to eat like 20 of them. <laughs> I know. It's not enough for a hungry man. <laughs> it's really good though. Thanks again, baby. You're welcome. Next on our list of maintenance items is sanitizing the freshwater tank. As usual, no boat job ever goes as smoothly as planned. We had to remove the gauge to access inside the tank, but it was stuck. And the only good way to get the leverage we needed was for us to get up close and personal in a most disturbing way. Okay, we got it. <laughs> Hi, Eddie. The well water in the marina is so rich in nutrients and bacteria that it causes buildup in the tanks. Even though the marina filters the water and we triple and quadruple filter the water, we want to make sure our tank is really clean because we use it for drinking. We used a bleach and water solution of one quarter cup bleach for every 16 gallons of water, which took us a lot of calculating. Eight, eight into 32 is four. And recalculating to get just right. We filled the tank to about a quarter full, then added the bleach and then filled the tank to the brim. We turned on every faucet in the boat until we could smell bleach coming out. Then we let it sit for about four hours. We pumped all the bleach water solution out of the tank. We thoroughly rinsed the tank with some fresh water. Then pumped out one more time. During this time, the boat was once again torn completely apart. Typical Friday night, obstacle course. Who knew parkour was going to be a prerequisite for sailing? The last step is to put everything back together. Hal added some TEF gel and a grounding wire to the gauge access port to prevent electrolysis from occurring which in layman's terms means it will be easier to open next time. We filled the tank with fresh water, ran all the faucets until we didn't smell bleach anymore, and voila, we have sparkling clean water we can drink. After we run it through the UV filter, you know, just in case. The last job on this week's list is to change out the impeller in the dinghy motor. We no longer have a workshop, so Hal has to get creative in how he works. In order to change the impeller, the motor had to be out of the water and accessible. So Hal rigged up a boom lift, which precariously dangled the motor over the dock, but it worked beautifully.
After hours of tedious work, the impeller was successfully changed, and he greased all the Zerk fittings and drive shaft. With everything put back together, it was time to put the motor back on the dinghy for a test. Water coming out means success. Last test, check the gears and take it for a spin. All of the items checked off the to-do list, we take a moment to sit on our favorite swing and contemplate our next steps. This is one of the last few times that we've rocked in this chair Aww. because we're going to leave this place and we're going to go see the world. We can't wait to set off, but unfortunately we have to wait because we have a problem. A leak we've been trailing for months has finally been diagnosed and it's not good. We had noticed some leaking from the stern area into the bilge. We shouldn't have that happening since we removed the stuffing box and added a dripless system, which meant there was only one other place it could be coming from, the shaft log or stern tube area. Let's talk about how we found the stern tube issue. Well, originally we had a uh, packing gland on our um, propeller shaft and so it always dripped a little bit. It was supposed to drip. It's supposed to lubricate. So we always had a little bit of water in the bilge. Um, so we elected to go with a dripless seal. There's pros and cons to both. I'm not, I don't want to get into that right now. But we went with the dripless seal. And then we noticed uh, that when we were, even after it was broken in, when we uh, would run the engine, or the actually in gear with the propeller running, we still were getting drips. We couldn't figure out where it was coming from. And so I bought an endoscope and I ran the endoscope underneath the dripless seal on the drive shaft. It was perfectly clear. Ran it down the drive shaft slowly and all the way back where the uh, stern tube beds up to the fiberglass and we see some water coming in. Slowly, but it's coming in about the same rate as a uh, packing gland. Three or four drips per minute. But it shouldn't be any, any water in there once we put that dripless seal in there. So. We are a little bit uh, nervous about that, so I uh, sent the video to the uh, boatyard, um, somebody we know there that did a lot of work for us, and he said, good find, but it needs to be addressed. So, in about a week from now, we are going to have to haul the boat out, pull the propeller off, the rudder, drive shaft, and see what's going on. They estimate about 45 hours of labor, but that's if there's nothing that goes wrong and if they don't have to wait for any parts and all of that, if, if, if everything goes perfect, which we know it never does. So we're looking at at least a couple of weeks out of the water. We ended up deciding because we were going to be hauled out for a couple of weeks, we went ahead and gave our 30 day notice here at Willowburn Marina which was kind of a bittersweet moment because we have uh, really enjoyed it here. It's a phenomenal marina. If you are ever in the California Delta up on the San Joaquin River, the McCullamy River, and you would like a place to stay, I highly recommend Willowbur Marina. They do, they have great services here. It's very well taken care of. The staff is amazing. And, um, they have a lot. It's more like a resort here than it is like a marina, and so we've really enjoyed a lot of it. Um, we did that because it's a 10-hour journey from this marina out to the bay, up the river, the delta in the river, and uh, we didn't want to get it fixed, have to come all the way back 10 hours, and then back 10 hours again to he he exit out the uh, Golden Gate Bridge. So we gave our 30-day notice, we're going to get our boat fixed, splashed, Splash the boat and then find a guest dock somewhere until we can provision and then head out. So hopefully it won't uh, set us back too far. Hopefully no, not too much delay. And do you want to talk about how we're going to get there? Yeah. So we, we debated for a little while 
how to get there and get our vehicle there because we're going to be there for a couple of weeks. There's nothing really close. So there's no grocery stores or anything right close to where the, the boat yard is. So we do need our car. We debated for a little while how to get the car and the boat there at the same time. Do we get a ride and all of that. So um, being the adventurous person that Hal is, he, uh, he thought it might be a good idea to just go ahead and single hand the boat up the river to the 10 hours anchor a night and then I can meet him at the boat yard the next day so we're gonna do that we're gonna see how it goes I'm a little bit nervous about all of that because there's a lot that goes into even just driving the boat um, and the river is not not no joke because you can't people you can't. cross oceans by themselves so yeah you know. but crossing a river is more dangerous than crossing an ocean sometimes You're going up not crossing, yeah. but yeah well, yeah you know, going up river is more dangerous yeah so <laughs> maybe that's the only challenge the biggest challenge is going to be 10 hours at the helm and in the river you can't leave that helm because there's obstacles and traffic and things so floating in the water my bathroom dredging is going to be yeah. up in the helm somewhere We're, it's going to be interesting yeah it'll be but interesting. uh I'm looking forward to the challenge, but I'm looking forward to playing my music loud because she has very sensitive ears and I'm deaf. That's true. So um, I'm looking forward to that part. I'm going to miss her for that day because she really helps me a lot. Um, but it's a challenge I, I'm looking forward to. Yeah. Anchoring by myself out there. And, yeah, uh, that'll be fun because anchoring is always a challenge when it's two of us. Maybe it'll be maybe it'll be better by yourself. <laughs> no, no communication no, issues. It's, it's always a benefit to have you at the helm when I'm <laughs> out in the front yeah so yeah that'll be a challenge but uh it will be. I'm not worried about it it may have to happen at some point in time and it's always good to know how to captain your boat without anybody else on there yeah so, so that's our challenge that is oh, it slight setback but we're still going very soon Join us next time as we say our goodbyes and put the Delta in our rear view as we head out to the bay for some boat work. Remember to like and subscribe. And also hit that bell. And remember notifications. When we wake, hear the birds and see the sun. Side by side our fears are done. Oh, the good times just begun Oh, we know what we have, let's hold on tight Found what we're looking for in life Call us crazy, but things are finally right With you and I, the future